It's good to have you with us today on The Path Founder. I am Rachel Abioye. We'll be talking about how civil society organizations are reshaping natural resource management and conservation and enhancing institutional and technical capacities, promote inclusive conservation, and advocate for equitable governance and human rights. I have with me Tony Mukolu, the founder and CEO of Tony Mukolu Foundation. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me. We also have Ambassador Chibike Kas Obiuze. He's the CEO of White Dove Services Enterprise. It's good to have you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. So let's go right into our conversations. Um, let's look at the challenges. I mean, key challenges, you know, and strategies in achieving sustainable development goals, especially in urban areas. Okay, thank you very much for bringing me to this uh, uh, interesting and uh, uh, very positive program. I call it profitable because uh, when we're talking about sustainable development, it is something that the environment, especially in Nigeria, mm -hmm. really needs. We talk about Africa as a whole. The main challenge that we have, like just like everybody know, will be funding. You know, funding because when you talk of you want to develop somebody, probably that means you are trying to make that person better than whoever he or she is. And when we talk about sustainable development, we are talking about uh, how do we harness growth, especially within the youths, because the youths are the leaders of tomorrow. And when we talk about youth, we're talking about, you know, um, whether male or female within the age of probably 18 to 40, according to United Nations standards right now. So uh, the main challenge we are having now is just that uh, people are not really focused on where they ought to be. What am I saying categorically? You know, just like uh, the international world today doesn't want to know probably you are master's or a PhD degree or that. But what do you have as in quality to offer? What kind of skill do you have that is measurable to the needs of the society? Just like the way it is being done in the international world. You don't have to be a graduate before you are a master of any skill. Right from the intermediary state, they teach them a lot of things. But right here in Nigeria, not until you are able to present a certificate, they don't see you as somebody that is carrying a skill. Those are one of the challenges. That's why my own foundation, uh, our major focus is creating platforms. When we talk about platform, you know, sustainable platform, bringing in development and growth within the youths, and most especially youths and women in general. And how do we incorporate this? By providing platforms, like platform creating skill acquisitions. People can easily learn. You know, a lot of people don't know what to do. Give them one million naira. You see them that they don't know what to do with one million naira. But I tell you, there are a lot of skills that you can learn that as low as 150,000 naira, you can find something doing. And if by the grace of God, you find a way in the next one year, you will not be where you are. That is creating more employment, creating more jobs, putting food on, on the table. So, but the main challenge we are having right now about sustainable development is that uh, uh, the tutors are very few in this field. And secondly, what we really need to harness providing these skills to the majorities uh, 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 is a challenge. Because most of these foundation and CEOs, most of it, because right now you need to provide for yourself. Funding is a key, but the governments are not even happy. The international community, because of the lack of integrity on the, com on the country, you find that you cannot even get donors. So you just have to improvise. And so, so do you think this has to do with only Nigeria? How about some other African countries? Do you think they are getting funding as they They are true? getting funding more than us. Okay, so you think those countries have more integrity more than us? Yeah, you see, as far as everybody knows in the whole world, number one, even from the presidency to down to the, to the roots, we are not trusted. Once the name Nigeria comes in, if not like people like us that believe that whatever paint us black, but we are we are Nigerians. Prove me wrong when, when you see me doing the same thing Nigeria is doing. But if you give me a role to play and I categorically deliver the particular role and tell you that I'm not part of these people, you are there, then you don't have anything to say concerning probably maybe we are one of the most corrupted country, country or not. Let me tell you categorically, we bid it for uh, some applications as an NGO two years back, even before the new administration came in. 
and the American donor said, Tony, you know what? The problem you're having is your country because nobody wants to do anything with Nigeria again. You don't have a good leadership. The country is fucked up. The economy is fucked up. I, we as donors, because we are not seeing results. So I think one of the key challenge, challenges in sustaining the environmental growth, even developmental growth in this country, is because, number one, we lack funding due to that the donors or the partners don't have this integrity, rich, free mindset concerning anything that is coming from, from here. Except you are one of their associates that they have done things for so many years, minimum of 10 years, 15 years. So you want to tell me that somebody has been, that has a passion for sustaining development growth and has not stayed in five years. So cannot do anything, cannot operate on his own. That's what we are trying to say. Okay, so what sustainable natural resource management practices has your organization adopted, you know, bring into place or promoted? Mm, okay, uh, actually right now, you know, my the main focus of my organization is eliminating poverty. Two, you know, creating sustainable development platform to bring them more employment by creating more Recently, about two years ago, we joined the advocacy on climate change because most of what the question you asked me has to be tied to most of the climate change. So what we are trying to do is that we are trying to sensitize the community about how we can decarbonize society you know, by going green. What do I mean by going green? Going green is that, you know, adopting to more of the green nature than using the energy, the fossil energy that we have been used to. A lot of people find it very difficult, even as I speak now, you know, it's, for you to drive a car in Nigeria, you must be rich. But when you talk about the cost of boiling, fueling your car in a day, I think a family of five that runs two vehicles, especially, let me use Abuja where we are, that means you are spending, you will not spend anything less than 200000 on a monthly basis on fueling. So if, if people are sensitized on more economical way to go more friend, friendly, that will cost them lesser by going green, I think it will be more better for the country. Because the, the, the government itself is clamoring on climate change. There are a lot of international funding are coming for climate change you know, through the United Nations and so on. But the most focal point is that the people on the street, are they really keen about how they can go green. Are they sensitized? Me personally, we've done one or two, we've organized one of or, or two uh, symposiums sensitizing people about green life, going green. How uh, in the community, imagine if ATC decided that, okay, right now you are owing us money, they can shut you down for the next two months. So if you have alternative source, you, you, are, not, you, are, you are not concerned because the green, the green energy you can tap from the, the direct sun, the thermal energy from the sun, and generate energy for yourself. You know, but we have, people need to be sensitized on these issues, to know how to go about them, to know how to go green, to live a, a more green life, so that we can decarbonize. Why is the United Nations EU? Why are they sending so much money to Africa? Although we are not seeing the money, the NGOs are not seeing the money, the CSO are not seeing the money. We don't know where the money is. Why going. do you think they are not seeing the money? That is the what this what I just told you about integrity, corruption, mismanagement. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Tony. Um, so let's come to you, Mr. Chibuze. Um, he talked about integrity, funding, and all of these things. And we want to educate people, we want to tell people about green economy, we want to tell people about green growth. But funding is a major challenge. So what do you think can be done or should be done? Well, um, thank you for having me. So the thing is this. Personally, for me, I think we need what I personally what I believe in is, I, or what I do basically is governmental entrepreneurship, and I think why I go into it is because I think there are a lot of things to explore with, and we are not seeing them, and the problem is maybe because we don't know or we don't make research or we are ignorant of it or we don't even want to know because. I personally made research. I studied philosophy, but I have friends that did with environmental science, chemical engineering, and all that. 
Then I realized that most of the issues we are having, the basic thing is debt. And debt is causing a lot of issues in Africa, not just Nigeria, because Africa is one of the most debt continents in, in the world. Mm-hmm. And then let's come to Nigeria. Nigeria is one of the debt in Africa. Mm-hmm. And then if you take, for instance, countries like um, Rwanda, Rwanda used to be very dirty after their genocide in 19... What? Until... 91. 91 or thereabouts. Until 2009, when they implemented some policies, like Umuganda and so on. We do that here in Nigeria, but we don't take it serious. Like that Umuganda is just like this environmental we do in Nigeria. Basically Lagos, because I grew up in Lagos. Every last Saturday of the month, you don't yes, come so out. Yes, so the time it was happening in Abuja too. And so yeah. you, these are things they do. They take it serious. Those Saturdays, they come out. Even their governors, their president, come out to the field, walk. They clean the road. They pick up a project to do that day. Then they do it. These are policies they bring in play that make them sustain the environment. Now, they are one of the most unique in Africa. And another thing I came to realize is this. We are very dirty. And then we are suffering from it. But those debts are really their economy, their money. Because if you check most of the things we consume in Africa, in Nigeria, we can actually turn them to something else. Either through um, recycling, through paralysis process, because we have what they call paralysis plants, where a debt or go through its process and then come out of something else, either as green energy or whatever you want it to be. So, why are we suffering for something that we can make money out of? I don't know if you understand. These are things we can actually make money from, and then it's a problem for us. So I believe if we can bring out policies, get people that are in the, have the right um, mindset to go into things like this, you see those problems will be solved. We have the same environment, a clean environment, and we still make money from them. But we actually have those policies. We do have that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Mr. Tony, what, what do you think? I think when you talk of Nigerian government, we have everything, mm-hmm. but they are not parallelized the way it's supposed to be. There are environmental agencies that are specially, they are paid, they have a DG for the environment, anything concerning environmental you know, sector of, of the nation. And that's why when they have any emergency, if an emergency, NAMA, all of them, for emergency cases like uh, the IDPs, they are there. You know, a lot of funding comes in from abroad, internationally, through the federal government, Ministry of uh, Social Human Services, for you know, but the parasitors are not doing what they ought to do. Okay, on, <coughs> on that, uh, you know, I used to think uh, finance was a problem. Yeah. I used to think finance was a problem because... I started making, I got interested after I started my cleaning service. Actually, I do commercial cleaning service. I clean apartments, hospitals, and that. I do projects too. Like, for instance, I did a project. I took over um, the cleaning of the local general hospital in my town. I do the cleaning at least once in three months. Uh, These are the projects we do. But I found out that Finance is not actually the problem, it's we really having the interest to do it. Because I then when I got the idea, I made research about both Umuganda, those countries that used to be dirty and now clean. Why? How? They are also human beings like us. So what did they do differently? I made research, I came out, I called friends. That was when I started gathering people that had ideas, that studied them, those courses, to see if we can do something. The, we are, you know, the thing is interest. You put in interest in what you want to do and then do them. And there are some things we, come, we came up with then. Meeting government, bringing the ideas up, going for loan, PPP, uh, public private partnership with the government, you know, you know, things like that. There are a lot of things we came up with. But first is having people that have like minds to do them with you. The second is the government seeing it worthy of their time or paying attention to those things. You understand? So we tried then, I tried basically to see if we can inculcate some things, but it was not encouraging actually. And then I decided to sit back, study more personally, because I have plans of 
studying about this waste management, basically waste wealth. And then I don't want to study it in Nigeria because they won't give me what I want. And then, so I plan going back, study more about it, get the basic knowledge from a country that knows what it means to have that system. And then they have run the system where you can see, practice and do all those things. Then when you come back, you are coming back to come and implement and start set up a business enterprise with it. Okay, thank you. So, um, Mr. Tony said funding is one of our major challenges. And Chibo is said, no, it's not financing, it's the interest. It's not, uh, no, not, I didn't say, uh, I, it is, funding is an issue, hmm. but not basically. No, we have many other issues. Maybe we'll have more people interested. Yes, yes we can actually. Think, let me just say, you know, you have an interest to implement a particular project. But I want to tell you, there's no project that you don't need funding. You need to get it. I think what it is to say is that you know people should put in more passion in every sector. Nigeria is where they are today is because people have taken the office of power as if it belongs to them, as if it is a generational, uh, a generational. I don't know how to put it. Offer to them. You know, if everybody, if if the code of conduct in Nigeria has been prioritized, we are saying that you know, uh, it, it, it is not a uh, business as usual. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Okay, as far back as 1960, okay, I'm just, uh, I, I did my 50th last birthday last year. And uh, as a little child, at 10, 10 years, I think I was uh, three, when uh, Buhari came in then, uh, I came from a family of 10. My father is a very nice man. Every morning, he gives us a, a breakfast, he finds us a, a tin of milk, like two of us, we shared or three people. But after six months, when Buhari came in, I found out that you, know, you can hardly even share three, uh, two in the, in the morning. So you can see the action. Then, then uh, at, uh, I finished my secondary school at 16, at 17, I was in the University of Ibadan. At 18, I traveled abroad, stayed 18 years abroad. So I found out that the last 40 years, the same government, it has been the same system, the same system, and the same system lying for the people. Nobody, probably they came there for their own passion, but along the line, they don't have a very good cabinet. Look at where we are today. Baba is doing something great. But are we seeing results? Those days, we used to say that the, the uh, uh, experience is the best teacher. These days, it's results that is the best teacher. So we, all of us, we are next together. You see, it's not, it's not about you. Do you know the reason why I, come? I came here today? I came here today because I said that you are doing something to improve the nation to improve the nation in your own aspect and i felt and i felt that if i have my own input let me put my input that's why i'm here you know give me away my two hours here because normally my my, my time is money if you are coming to give you thank if, you yes. for coming yes because i understand what you are trying to do so that's why i'm trying to chip in because you don't know who is here going to hear this you don't know where it's going so you know that somebody somewhere is saying this look i'm telling you you need to build yourself build your own integrity I share a name with somebody that I have passion for. Those days when I was a little child, I have passion for Abiola, the, the, the um, chief MK of Abiola. May so rest in peace. You know why? Because when I read his biography, this, this is a child that came from nowhere and became a multimillionaire, became a billionaire, and was doing what we are doing today. He was the best philanthropist as, as, as I know then. then that, that, that. Do you understand? Okay, today, see what Tony Olimelu is doing. It's my nation. The man has an integrity because he has a background for being a, a chairman of a bank for almost 30 years. Today, they are not giving Nigerian support, but they are giving millions of dollars to Tony Olimelu because he has integrity. He has been tested and known. All the $5,000 is, is sharing is not his money. People are bringing in the money because they know he's doing good. Just like I have a project, 5,000 Nigerians, to make 5,000 entrepreneurs within the 36 states of Nigeria. I've sent proposals everywhere. But why am I not receiving? But I know some of them are still working in prison because, you know, the integrity matter. Can you handle this? If we give you this money, can you do it? They gave it to Tony Miller because they know it has structures. So that's what we are trying to say. You see, what we are doing, we need to announce and put more passion to what we are doing. Not about the money we want to make. It's like somebody that wants to open a church just because of tight. I bet you he will get the title of offering, but the person will not go anywhere. Because 
Church is about love. When you want to give, you give out of love. You don't give out of force. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, so basically all we're saying is um, you mentioned funding as one of the major challenges. Yes. You mentioned interest. And then um, you also talked about integrity. Yes. So I think these are major things that should be worked upon and commitment. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Tony. Thank you so much for, for coming. Um, and it's going to be a wrap on the Pathfinder today. I am Rachel Abioye. See you again.